So today we're gonna build a keyboard with the new glorious GMMK3 Pro, and this is the bare bones edition. Now GMMK, that stands for the Glorious Modular Mechanical Keyboard, and this is a really, really nice bare bones set. If you don't know what a bare bones set is, that means it basically just comes with the housing for the keyboard, some of the cables, the PCB, and the sound dampening foam and gasket, that's all built in there. But otherwise, no switches, no keycaps, nothing else. You just have to kind of put it together yourself. That gives you the option of customization, which is crucial when it comes to these keyboards. You get different kinds of switches with different kind of tactile feedback, different kind of clickiness. Uh, you get different kinds of actuation forces. If you like a linear switch, a more tactile or clicky switch. There's so many different options. And there's even more to come with Hall Effect switches, traditional mechanical switches, the list kind of goes on and on. It's crazy how many different configurations you can do with just this one bare bones set. It's actually really impressive. So the set that we're gonna be using today, obviously it's going to be this black version of the GMMK3 Pro, and we're going to pair this with the glorious Mako switches. So these have a 45 gram actuation force, and it even says here on the box, which I really like, it kind of gives you all of the highlights. It gives you an idea of how noisy or clicky they are. They call it about a medium noise. There's a tactile feed and they're mechanical switches. Uh, this bare bones does not work with Hall Effect. It's only gonna work with your three prong or five prong switches. So these are gonna work just fine. I also paired this off with the GPBT Celestial Ice keycaps. I'm actually really excited to get this combination going. I really like the gradient keycaps. I think they're a really nice, clean, and pretty cool look. So I think this is gonna go very well. And then I paired it off with this nice electric blue coiled cable. So you get this nice blue and black kind of look, obviously with the RGB underneath. You'll get the RGB is gonna show through the switches because we have clear switches here, as well as RGB on the side. Got the box here, and this is heavy. That aluminum body, definitely gives this keyboard a good amount of weight, which I like. Uh, when you have a plastic body keyboard, it'll feel a little bit lighter. I always like the packaging that they do for these. Look at this. So let's start with the actual keyboard body itself. Fully wrapped here. Nice tissue paper, keep it from getting any scratches. So you can see the PCB back there, and that's where all of the switches are going to insert into. And obviously you have your adjustable, customizable knob, nice machined out, glorious right there. So you have your Windows and your Apple settings here. So depending on what OS you're using, you can change that. You have a nice little strip here along the side uh, that's gonna give you some RGB. And then obviously you can see your LEDs on each little area where the switch is gonna go. So that's where you're gonna get your RGB effect coming through the switches. So again, aluminum body, and the thing about aluminum body is that, you know, it's not gonna flex. Like I cannot physically bend this, this is rock solid. Um, and then you can even feel the PCB underneath. I can kind of push it a little bit and it's not flexing. Some keyboards, you're gonna get some flex in certain parts where the PCB is not well supported. So you can just kind of feel that as you go in. And some of the components inside you actually can remove. Um, so if you do want to get a softer feel underneath, you can take, I think, the gasket out and some of the other parts. And there is a sound dampening foam in here. So you're not going to get that hollow sound when you're pressing on the switches. Some plasticky bodies, you know, when they don't have sound dampening foam, it can sound really, really hollow. Uh, but this one, I think it's gonna sound great. All right, let's take a look at what else is in the box. Then over here, we've got our screwdriver set. You have some of your foamies. A couple of screws. So these are all kind of parts that I can keep for later. And then it comes with this USB cable, but I'm gonna use the coiled cable instead. I'm a big fan of these coiled cables. I, th I just think they look a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. Um, this cable's still perfectly fine and usable, but I think this one's gonna look just a little bit better. So, pretty excited to use this. And then obviously it comes with your keycap puller and your switch puller as well. So it came with a couple of switches. 
the ones that it came in the box, there's the, so the foxes, they're smooth linear, and then they have their panda keycap. This is their tactile, kind of thocky. And then the raptor, this one has their clicky. There you go. There's that famous click that people love for mechanical keyboards. So you have your switch pullers, you have your keycap pullers. These are gonna be important to keep uh, if you want to change your keyboard down the line, which some people do. You know, they spend the time, they put all the switches and keycaps in, and then they're gonna swap them around eventually. First thing we'll do is we'll get our switches out of the box. Got 110 in here. I'm not gonna need all of them since this is a 75% keyboard, but this will give you more than enough coverage. And just have a nice baggie of switches to go off of. And these are my Mako switches. So you can see two pins right here. So when this is pressed down, it completes the circuit and on the PCB, it'll send the signal to your computer. So that's everything that you need. So this is pretty straightforward. It's really just kind of plug and play. You see there's two little pins here and a couple of prongs and a center post. You're just gonna match all of those up. The pins are gonna be on the bottom and it literally just pushes right in. All right, one down, got a bunch more to go. Um, so these are not Hall effect switches. And what they do is when they're pressed down, you can see the spring leaf in there. It just completes the circuit once this is fully pressed. Sends the electrical signal across the PCB, goes to your computer. And then that's what makes the signal for your key press. And it's pretty straightforward. Hall effect is a little bit different. That's gonna be using magnets. And depending on how far down you press, it sort of changes the voltage uh, that the Hall effect sensor receives and then that gives you some more customization for input. So if you do sort of a light press, or if you wanna do like a rapid touch or a rapid fire, it kind of allows for like those kinds of settings. Obviously there's some companion software that you wanna use for that as well. This is a very straightforward process really, once you kind of get them lined up. And sometimes you wanna check the pins of the switches, make sure they're just not bent out of place, you know? If they're slightly bent out of place, you know, from being in the bag or from transportation, as you push them down, it can cause the pin to sort of bend over or even break. Fortunately, I don't think we're gonna have that issue because frankly, these are made very, very nicely. This Bare Bones does have a modular gasket system, so you can change the gasket out inside. Um, the amount of customization that's available with these keyboards is absolutely crazy. You can customize every little thing to your liking. Obviously, if you go to Micro Center, you can go inside, you can try out different keyboards. Uh, we have all different switches on display for you to test out, and you can kind of get a feel for what you like. I really like linear switches, just a classic kind of cherry red or fox switch, you know, if you have glorious switches, just a simple red linear switch I find that works just fine for me. You know, tactile switches are kind of nice if you find you have heavier fingers and you find you're pressing down too hard. Because you have to remember, I mean, this is sort of an extension of your PC, right? If you're gonna spend $1,500, $2,000, you know, on your PC, um, especially if you're like really big into gaming, you know, you don't want a $5 keyboard. <laughs> That's, it's the way you interact with your PC. It's the physical part of your PC that you're touching every single day, keyboard and your mouse. And so a good keyboard and mouse, they go a long, long way. But something like this, especially something that you can kind of put together yourself, you know, if you built your own PC, might as well build your own keyboard too, right? All right, last one, gonna be the escape key. There we go. Can't do much because there's no keycaps on there, but you can kind of hear it. You can hear it a little bit. I'll put the mic up. Check, see how the RGB looks. This is the USB cable that came with the keyboard. Look at that. So no keycaps on, just the switches, but you can see the RGB, RGB on the side. That looks really, really nice, especially if you're gonna be gaming in sort of like a dark room. You know, this illumination that comes on the side, this will illuminate the mouse, that'll illuminate the other side. So that's gonna look really, really nice. I think this should be the function key, and there we go. 
that should let me function this should let me scroll through different RGB settings there we go colors are sort of falling in the downward pattern have like a wave pattern so you can see all of the different RGB patterns I have a laptop plugged in over there that I was plugged into and I'm just testing all of the keys to make sure that they're working. I really like this Osmo Pocket, kind of makes shooting things up close real easy. All right, so I is working, O, P is working, but I'm not getting anything out of O. So right here, you can just take this guy, pull it right up. Yep, one of the pins bent right there. So I think when I was pushing it in, I think I messed up. I just have notepad open. I'm literally just hitting kind of each one. So I could straighten this out if I really wanted to, but I'm just gonna swap it out for a different look. The nice thing is this is hot swappable. Um, so that means you can literally just swap it out while it's on in the middle of a game. If you wanted, you could swap it out. And O is working. There we go. So tilled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Looks like E is not working as well. Looks like I did it again. So just pinch the top and bottom and it just comes right up. Oh, it's another one. It's kind of hard to do this and talk at the same time. Sometimes, you know, it's nice to just sit and put some music on and concentrate. There we go. E's working just fine. So that's two switches that I flubbed a little bit. I mean, thank goodness it came with a bunch of extras. It does happen. I mean, let's be real. This is not a manufacturer error. This is user error all the way. Next up, let's do some keycaps. G PBT Celestial Ice. So it's gonna be the gradient keycaps. So all the keycaps are on these trays here. Always helps me out because I have been using keyboards for years and I always forget the layout <laughs> like every time. So this is actually extremely helpful. So with these, uh, there's a cross pattern right here that's gonna match up to the switch. Literally, it's just gonna slide right in. It's extremely simple. You just feel it line up, press down, and there you go. All set. PBT feels really nice. It's got a little grippy feel to the top too, so it's not perfectly smooth. So you want like kind of slide off. There's a little grippiness to it. We'll just line up the switch to the keycap, and then we sort of have these like little stabilizer pieces here on the side and that's just going to line right up so with these switches and with this keycap set this is meant for full-size keyboard with a number pad on the side but this is a 75 percent so there's going to be some extras just kind of sitting aside you can just keep that stored away in the box or you can use it as an opportunity to build your own numpad i think that's the next logical thing to do now that we're done assembling the keyboard why don't we do a quick kind of asmr test Let's try it out. I think that sounds amazing. I mean, the sound dampening foam and just the overall acoustics on this body sound really, really good. Um, I've definitely used keyboards where there's no sound dampening foam. It's very hollow inside with the PCB and you get that echo inside when you're pressing on the keycaps. You don't really get that here. It's dampened and the acoustics sound really nice. You still hear the switches, obviously. They're not clicky. These are tactile, so they got a little bit of you can hear that, right? But Unlike some clickier switches, it's not overly annoying. I'm not exactly a speed typist, so maybe if I was a faster typist, it might sound a little bit like that. But all in all, I mean, acoustics wise, I think it sounds fantastic. And especially for being a mostly out of the box experience, you're just putting your switches and kind of the switches of your choosing. You're just putting the keycaps, again, keycaps of your choosing. and. Honestly, you get a rock solid keyboard right out of this. Last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this guy up and let's get some footage of uh, what this looks like with this really nice coiled cable. I have a nice electric blue coiled cable. Let's open this guy up. Put 
What I really like about these coiled cables it just makes it look so much neater. Obviously you can stretch it out if you really need it, but a lot of the length is going to come from this portion here and it just connects straight away. So the connector is right here and it just lines, you just line this up, there's a little notch, it has five pins and you can just twist it together. Let it lock in place. I'm going to go plug this into my laptop over here and there you have it. There it is with the nice coiled cable. I think this looks fantastic. Everything looks great. I mean, this would look really, really good on someone's desk, you know, especially if you're kind of customizing your desk and customizing sort of the look, if you want to make a more cohesive look on your desk space, this is really the way to do it. You know, your keyboard is really the centerpiece of your desk. So this is a really good way to sort of just bring the whole theme together, especially if you have maybe a color themed build or you have some themed RGB strips or fans or anything of that nature in your PC, you know, with this kind of gradient here, I would also do a sort of matching blue gradient with the lights in my PC, sort of bring it all together. I think it will look fantastic. I'm going to kill the overhead light so we can see what it looks like in sort of a darker situation here. So you can swap through the different RGB modes and you can change the illumination to your liking. So one quick thing I want to point out before we wrap up is the Glorious Core software. So you can see that the GMMK3 Pro pops up here and you can customize this even further. If you want to do different lighting profiles, you can do different preset effects that they have built in. Uh, I'm a big fan of the wave, although you could do the glorious mode as well. They have a whole bunch of others, breathing. You could do single color if you want. Let's try single color, something in the blue range. We'll crank the brightness a little bit bring it more like ice blue so it can match there we go I can match a little bit more of what the gradient is doing with the keycaps and then on the sides as well you can kind of customize the sides if you want on the performance side uh, there is a 1000 Hertz polling rate but you can adjust the polling rate to be lower if you choose you can also adjust the input latency by default it's set to 16 milliseconds but you can go as low as three milliseconds uh, you can also change the input latency uh, by default it's set to 16 milliseconds you can go as low as two milliseconds but i'll just leave it on the default for now and obviously you can do any macros and any sort of shortcuts and other kind of custom functions that you would like to do with your keyboard as well as customizing the knob I always like it as just like a volume slider. I always think that's kind of handy to have. Uh, you can have different profiles that you can swap through and save. So using the software definitely helps a lot with further customizing your keyboard. And I think this glorious GMMK3 Pro bare bones has been just really awesome to work with. I like this a lot. I'm very happy with the way that this keyboard came out. And what I really like about this is how solid and rigid it feels. There's no flex when I'm pressing in. I don't feel the PCB flexing in the frame of the body there. I can just feel all across the board. It's really, really solid. So sometimes with some, you know, cheaper keyboards, there's going to be a little bit of flex there when you're pressing down. But Again, this is completely solid. And if you wanted, you could open this up. You can take out the sound dampening foam if you want it to be a little bit louder when it comes to the thockiness and noise that you're getting from the switches. Um, you can customize the gaskets. You can customize a couple of other things. So just remember that not just the hardware side, there is the software side as well. So there's full customization all across the board. And remember, you can get this at your local Micro Center. We have these ready and available as early as this week. So stop on by, check it out. Check to see which kind of switch that you like to use. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite mechanical keyboard switch is. And remember, if you don't have a Micro Center near you, comment hashtag, I want a Micro Center near me.